We are currently in our galley right now, as you can see. And we just received our small, compact, portable stand-up washing machine. So we run into a lot of issues with the washing machine here at the marina. Uh, it works probably about 70% of the time or so. And because it's also $4 per load um, when you go wash and dry, um, generally we're spending anywhere between eight to ten dollars uh, ish per week so you multiply that by you know a whole year ten dollars times 52 is 520 dollars so i picked up this uh, black and decker washer for about 250. you can see it's uh, 0.9 cubic feet now it is just a washer it's not one of the two-in-one washer dryers uh, ventless condenser units um, those are around $1,200, and unfortunately, the actual limiting factor for getting it where we need to get it is the doorway. So you can see our doorway is about measures about 18 inches, uh, 17 and a half, 18 inches across. Now this is 17 in one dimension, so it's going to be tight. I might have to disassemble some stuff. And same deal over here. And that uh, this popular um, ventless condenser washer dryers, uh, those generally the, the width on those is about 24 inches, so um, just two too big to fit back there. We also looked at trying to get maybe the condenser unit up here and apologies, it's a little messy as we uh, open this up because we had some, a little bit of water I wanted to dry out. Um, but the same deal applies for this doorway. And this unfortunately is only 20 inches wide. And even if we wanted to drop it in the hatch there, same thing, it's about 20. So um, the condenser unit is not a viable option. This boat would have had to have been built around it, <laughs> essentially. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and get this unpacked and hopefully fit it around the door. The plan is to put it back here where this chair is. So I'm probably gonna take this chair up and out and sit it there. The plywood is slightly angled um, this way. So the rear part of the chair is further back or goes further down than the forward part. So um, we have to level that out. Uh, I believe the washer has leveling feet on it, but I'm not sure if I can account for such a drastic um, slope. Uh, if, if that is the case, then I might have to take up the plywood underneath the chair and get a newer piece that runs completely flat. So that's what the plan is. Here's some of my washers. Wonderful. And I did forget to mention when it comes to drying, since this is just a washer, our plan is to just use a uh, standard drying rack. So um, I grew up as a kid using those and worked just fine. Um, my only real concern was the humidity content in the air um, as that's drying, but I think with our, you know, big size dehumidifier there, I think that should easily be able to handle the amount of liquid uh, or condensation there. So as you can see, the door frame is off and we were able to get the washer back here. So if anyone else is a Hunter 376 or potentially a Hunter that has uh, doors that measure exactly 16 inches from this frame piece to this frame piece and it will fit as long as you take the door frame off so you can see we have the door with the frame off right now um, and i did keep the door on the hinges which is attached to the frame and essentially just remove that first piece of frame um, there are two pieces so this one does come off for further um, additional access if we need it but it fit right through just fine with just the first frame off and for anyone who's interested, and also um, so I can reuse this video and come back and look at it if I ever need to again, the distance between this inner frame and this inner frame is exactly 17 and a half, and the distance between the actual wood frame or the wood entryway of the door is exactly 18 inches. All right, we've got our first load of laundry going in. This is a temporary location right now, and it's kind of a jinky installation. Um, we have a hose hooked up to the sink, but um, right now we're just testing out the capability. Now, the weird thing is that when this hose is on the ground, the, the water just goes straight out when it's on the ground. So it needs to go up above the water level inside the uh, washer, otherwise it just drains out. So I'm going to have to make sure that I route this um, and essentially put a loop in it um, somewhere up above the water level of the washer. But that's not a big deal, I just have it pointed like that so <laughs> it doesn't spray too far out, it'll go out the door. But let's see we've got a first little load in there. Have in there? Yeah. Oh wait, no I didn't. No, no, I did, I did. I did. I think. I have a right here. Did you grab that? I don't know, I don't remember. 
Does it look? What's it look like? All right, we had a bit of a blowout there. I didn't realize how much the uh, hose has force when the water is draining out of the washer. So we had it kind of looped around that, but it was so forceful that it was spraying all over the place. So it kind of went everywhere. Um, so we now have it duct taped up there to the sink. So we'll see what happens. But unfortunately, the hoses that came with my, my real complaint is like how ridiculously short the hoses are. I mean, I guess most people would like use this in a bathroom but we can't get it in here because the doorways, but like, I mean, the sink hose, they give you is like literally like 30 feet. And then even the drain hose, like you have to be literally right next to a sink uh, in order to use it. As you can see, like we're, <laughs> we don't really have much slack and we're not that far. It's probably like four feet or so. Um, so now we have it pointed in the sink. So we'll see if that works. Um, hopefully it doesn't go ricocheting out. You can see we've got our I up a gardening hose to it because it was so short. It's one of those expando ones. Yeah. <laughs> what? I got that on video. <laughs> Did you get it on video? Yeah. <laughs> so we just finished up our uh, first laundry load. Found about a minute left. And we just did a pretty light load with a couple items in it. Um, the washer has three different settings for um, uh, amount of clothes in there, which is nice, so we can minimize water usage. So we just did the, the lowest amount. Um, basically, you're able to fill it up to about uh, about two thirds or so, they say. But this thing this thing was ripping on the spin cycle. So I'm assuming that clothes are gonna be pretty dry for the most part. And um, our plan now is, uh, originally we were thinking of putting like a drying rack kind of in this area, um, or potentially up there, but um, I did find some retractable um, uh, laundry lines. So I'm thinking of maybe mounting one like up here and then it's a little box. It has like a reel in it and then you pull the laundry line and we bring it all the way over here and then clip it onto something here. That way we'd have this whole area here, you know, when it's laundry day, um, we can put hangers up for the shirts and then you can also get um, uh, hanging uh, elements uh, that have like, imagine like, um, it's like a, a circular plastic piece with little clips hanging down on it for putting your socks on um, and like boxers and underwear and like small stuff like that. So I think that might be the way we go. That way we don't have to worry about this, you know, unwieldy um, drying rack. Plus the drying rack would probably be right here in the area where we walk through all the time. So I'm in the process of switching out the old uh, kind of Chinese knockoff breakers with some real breakers. So we have some Blue Sea System uh, panel mount 40 amp breakers here, which you can see are much more robust and I'm sure follow a lot more uh, electrical codes than these ones that I got off uh, Amazon. So I'm going to hand and remove the first one. I've also turned off the DC system so those wires are no longer live. And what I'm going to do now is um, uh, kind of pass them back through that panel there, the wooden panel, and get them um, set up here with some um, new terminals so that I can put them on the screws here on the back of the breakers. Okay, we've got the first one in there. You can see on the right, the charge controller to the battery. That one's in. I didn't end up going with a high mount position just to cover up one of the old wire outlets and I also covered up the two holes from the previous uh, fuse or excuse me previous breaker um, with the tape down there below so it looks a lot better and I'm definitely sure that it's a lot safer going to function a lot better as well so I'm gonna go ahead and work on the second one there on the left so that winter's coming up we are going to replace the uh, one end of our 30 amp cord, um, especially because we're going to be using extra power come uh, winter once we need to run on the electric gear. So uh, this had some issues at one point and it still has been working okay. Um, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to go ahead and rather than purchasing a whole new cord for a little over a hundred dollars, what I'm going to do is cut it here and use this uh, repair head here. This is from um, Marinko as well. And essentially just allows you, it's a fully waterproof housing, allows you to cut the old cord, pass it through here, 
and uh, essentially end up with a brand new um, female receptacle there. So I believe this was about 45, 50 bucks online. So should be a pretty quick fix. Basically you just, um, as with a standard you know household outlet, you're just hooking up your hot um, neutral and ground. And as with any electrical work, uh, you always want to make sure that your line is completely dead. Um, so not just the breaker turned off, but everything completely um, unhooked. So this one is completely unhooked at the other end. And you can also use one of these electrical detectors. So this senses the AC current in a plug. So you go ahead and stuff it in there. You got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing. Whereas this were a live circuit. When you plug it in, it would beep and flash red. Oh, 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 oh it's falling. <laughs> Almost took my toes off. <laughs> Look at that. You can see the cross section there. Pretty thick cable. I think it should be 10 gauge if it's rated for 30 amps. So, now we just gotta trim this end and feed it through. So, basically I'm just splicing open the wire now. Alright, so we got green to green, white to white, or white to silver, and black to black. So we're good to go. I'm just gonna strap this guy on top of the uh, actual female receptacle there, and then bring the boot over and make sure that everything is nice and tight and secure. So now that we have our laundry machine, it's time to get a laundry line mounted in the boat so that we can dry our laundry. So we have here a uh, what's called a gorilla line. So essentially a retractable laundry line that holds up to 40 pounds worth of uh, clothes. So it has a retractable component here, uh, which you can see kind of comes out. And there's also a lock which uh, that retractable piece fits into. So the plan is to mount the actual uh, gear unit with all the line here um, up above the router right there. And then we will be mounting the little lock slot uh, about over in this area right here above the lamp. That way the line will come pretty much directly across just like that. Just taking a quick shot here this morning before I head off to work. But as you can see, our new laundry line is up and we have our laundry drying from last night. And everything is completely dry, which is nice. Unfortunately, with this line, it's like a slick metal and things do tend to slide in towards the center, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, in order to counteract that, you can put a uh, clothespin up on the hanger itself, or you can, if you have enough room, you can just go ahead and drape the pants over or the clothes over the clothesline. Um, without using a hanger, just like we kind of did here. But um, we did try testing out the hanger method first just to see how many or, uh, how many articles of clothing we could fit on the clothesline. So this will definitely help speed up our laundry process and make it a lot less uh, cumbersome because previously what we were doing is we were taking our laundry to the laundromat here at the marina, um, which is kind of a pain because you have to lug this big bag all the way over uh, pretty far throughout the marina especially when it's cold, potentially rainy out, um, more snowy, and uh, then also switch it into the dryer. So that was costing us uh, about $10 a week or so, and now we are down to uh, essentially $0 a week for doing our laundry. Now we do have to do um, extra loads since the washer here is a lot smaller, but that's totally fine since it's relatively easy. You know, you just pop them in there, turn them on, and then pull them out and hang them up real quick. So definitely, definitely very happy with this. And uh, it's actually kind of exciting to do laundry now. 